Hey, welcome back. This week has been a very exciting week for me and my family because my sister had a baby. And so I thought I'd take the opportunity to make a gender reveal cake. So she had a baby boy, but she didn't actually find out what she was having at all, which made it really exciting for all of us. But in general, gender reveal cakes are usually given at baby showers or before the baby is born to let the parents know what gender they're having. So some people make gender reveal cakes by colouring their sponges, but if you know me, you know that I like to keep colouring to a minimum. So I'm just going with a normal vanilla sponge, vanilla buttercream, and then the gender bit is gonna come from the surprise filling. So what I've got here is a mixture of blue chocolates. Now, some people also like to use sprinkles, which I've used before. The thing is, sprinkles aren't that nice to eat and chocolate is a bit nicer, so I thought I'd choose some blue chocolate, but you can kind of fill it however you want. So I'm going to start, like I said, with my six inch vanilla sponge and I've cut it into four even layers. And what I'm gonna do is use a small round cutter and cut the middle out of each one. Now, the centres from the middle layers, you can eat or just throw away or do whatever with. But the centres from the top and the bottom, I want to keep and cut in half. So I've cut those in half and now I can put them back in the top and the bottom layers. And just before I start filling it up with buttercream, I'm going to use my simple vanilla syrup and soak the cakes. So as usual, I've got my turntable, a little wet cloth to make sure that the cake board doesn't slide around. And I'm just going to put a little bit of buttercream to make sure the cake doesn't slide. And I'll go on with my first layer of cake and press it down securely. And then I've got my Swiss meringue buttercream here and I'm going to pipe a layer but avoiding the center where I've cut out because that's where the chocolates are gonna go. So I'll start with a ring around the center just to make it easier and then go from there. And I'll just use my palette knife to spread that out nice and flat. And it doesn't matter if the buttercream is coming out of the edges at all, because we can correct that when we're doing the crumb coating. But what you do want is the center to be clear of buttercream. So I'm just gonna go around and scrape any excess buttercream from the center. Next layer of cake and more buttercream. Spread that out. And once again, clean the center. Repeat one last time. So you can see that the center is completely clear. Now I'm going to put on the last layer, but remove the center from it. Make sure all the layers are aligned. And now I'm gonna fill the center with the blue chocolates. Whoops. Got some chocolate escaping. And now I'll put the centerpiece back. So the filling is nice and secure and hopefully when you cut it open, all the filling comes out and reveals the gender. So now I'm just going to crumb coat it like I would do any cake. The buttercream that's come out the outside is the excess that I can use for the crumb coat, but I'm just going to put a little bit more on the top and spread it out to encase the whole cake. So I'll use my palette knife to flatten off the top and almost push that buttercream over the edge. 
And now I'll use my side scraper to scrape off the excess buttercream. So I'm just cleaning my palette knife to now clean the corners with one swift movement and clean every time. From the outside in. So the crumb coat is done and I'm gonna set this in the fridge until it's nice and firm, so about 20 minutes. Now just a tip, all of the excess buttercream that you've just scraped off from your crumb coat, unfortunately, you're gonna have to discard and use fresh buttercream that I didn't use, for example, for the next coating, because obviously that all has crumbs in and you don't want the crumbs getting in the second coating. But on the plus side, you've got those little bits of extra cake so you can nibble on. So I'm gonna chill this in the fridge and then get on with the second coating. So the crumb coat is nice and firm. Now when it comes to gender reveal cakes, you obviously don't want to give away the gender on the outside because the inside contains the surprise. So some people like to decorate it in both pink and blue or a neutral colour, um, whether it's stripes up the sides or different coloured sprinkles. But what I'm going to do is actually coat the whole thing in white and then just apply some textured buttercream in blue and pink on the outside and then top it off with an isomalt sail. So it's quite abstract and simple, um, but again, the excitement comes from when we cut it open later. So what I'm gonna do, I have some excess buttercream already in my piping bag, so I'll just use this to apply to the outside. And I don't usually apply a second coating of buttercream with a piping bag, but seeing as it was already in here, I might as well use it. And now I'll encase the whole cake in that thin layer of buttercream. So I've encased the whole cake in buttercream and now it's time to concentrate on getting a flat top, straight sides and sharp corners. So I'm going to go over the top first, just spinning it and flattening it out. And I'm using the shape of my palette knife to get that really flat surface. And I have a bowl of excess buttercream here, which I can scrape into because this buttercream no longer has crumbs in. And just to make sure it is nice and flat, I'm actually gonna go over the top with my scraper really lightly and this just ensures a really even top and now I'll go around with the side scraper and straighten up the sides And so what I'm gonna do is actually leave the corners like this and then scrape them off once it's been in the freezer again. Because I'm not doing a drip, I want the top corners to be as sharp as possible. So once you're happy with the sides, leave it at this stage, put it back in the freezer so it's nice and cold for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna cut off the corners. So this trick only works when the buttercream is completely firm, which is why it's better to put it in the freezer. Now I've got a knife here, and what I'm gonna do is just gently cut away that buttercream around the corners. You can literally lift it up. And it creates a really sharp corner. And then I just like to tidy up the top just by going over very gently and just one more time around the edge.
Now that is pretty straight and sharp. So what I'm gonna do as part of the design, I've colored some buttercream pink and blue, and I'm going to do this while the cake is still cold. Just apply a tiny amount of buttercream on my palette knife and just spread little bits over the surface. So I'm going up and across. And then the same in pink. And the buttercream is solidifying quite quickly because it's so cold. And you can kind of go over very gently and create texture. I'll do a little bit on the top, just to continue the design. So I've gone for a little bit of an abstract design. You can continue this all around the cake. You can put it in and out the freezer and create even more layers, but I'm going to leave it like this and get on with the ice malt sail, which is going to sit on the top to finish off the cake. So in these two pans, I have melted some isomalt. Now isomalt is a fake sugar, and all you need to do is either microwave it or heat it up in a pan, and it basically dissolves into a clear liquid. So the good thing with isomalt is that it doesn't burn, or at least it's very hard to burn, unlike sugar that catches very easily, and it also stays really well for days even. So if you do some sort of sugar decoration, it tends to dissolve because of the moisture in the air, whereas isomalt stays. So what I've got in preparation is a seal pattern mat and a glass, and I'm basically going to mould it over the glass. But before I do that, I'm going to colour two of these pans in blue and pink. Now if I put the colours directly in there already without titanium dioxide, it still colours it but it's see-through, so the titanium dioxide gives it more of an opaque appearance. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in each of these pans and mix it into the isomalt. And it's gone from a clear liquid to a white liquid. And now I'm going to colour one blue, a tiny amount of gel food colouring, and the other pink. And I'm doing two pans because obviously I want the two-tone effect, but you can just do it in one. And you do need to work quite quickly because the isomalt can start to harden, saying that if it does start to harden, you can just heat it back on the hob. So you still want it quite runny before you pour it onto the mat. And this is basically a little experiment because I haven't actually done a two-tone one before. But what I'm going to do is pour the pink on one side. And then the blue on the other, directly next to it. And then move it around just to make it a little bit bigger. And it will already start to slow down because it does cool quite quickly. Then get the glass and mould it over the top. And then secure it with some pegs just to hold it in place. Oh, got some dripping going on already. <laughs> And I'm going to leave it like this for a good five minutes until it stops dripping and sets. Now it doesn't actually take that long to set, but it will still be hot. So I want it to be cool before I demold it, otherwise there's a risk of it changing shape. Now this is dripping slightly too much, so I can just catch this. And then I can cut it. So it's the moment of truth, I'm just going to remove the pegs and carefully take it off the cup. Whew. Nice and snug. And then the mat should come away really easily. That 
looks really cool. <laughs> I'm really happy that it turned out. And it's continued with this abstract theme that I was going for. So I think it's a perfect topper for abstract buttercream like I've done. And now it's just a case of placing on top of the cake. So I really like this design of a gender reveal cake. The decoration is quite simplistic, but it's got an abstract feel to it and the focus is on the pink and blue. And of course, there's only one thing left to do and it's to cut it open to reveal the gender. So I thought the filling would actually spill out all over the place, but I'm kind of glad it didn't because once I've done this with sprinkles and the sprinkles went absolutely everywhere. So you can see that it's blue on the inside, which indicates it's a boy, everyone's happy, and the cake also looks absolutely delicious. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. More tutorials are on the way, but in the meantime, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn on the notifications button so you get notified every time a new video is live. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon.